Now that we've entered in all our resources for our project, for now, we're only going to focus on and assign our work resources to our task. And then once we grasp this training video, later on I'll show you how to assign your materials to your task, your cost to the task, and then also your budget for your cost, the budget for your work resources, and a budget for your material resources. Now keep in mind we haven't assigned any of our resources here a cost. Like for our writer, you got your hourly rate, your overtime rate, or your one-time cost per use. So you could say instead of charging editor one ten dollars an hour, he just says, ah, give me a thousand dollars and I'll get it all done. There's your one-time cost use. And you may want to go ahead and assign your cost use before you go ahead and assign these resources to your task. And I'll go ahead and cover assigning the costs in the resource cost training video later on. For right now, we're just going to go ahead and do it without it and assign our work resources to our task. Now the benefits for assigning your resources to a task include at least four. First of all, if it's a work resource, it's going to tell us who's working on the task. For example, who's cleaning out the fridge? Is it artist one, editor two? Second, accurate scheduling. For example, we want to go off the resources calendar and their availability. As you recall, the resource calendar takes precedence over the project calendar. So if one of our resources here can only um, work on weekends when the project's only scheduled to work Monday through Fridays, then we want to make sure that that resource, that we set the schedule up, and of course it overwrites the project schedule, and the project allows that resource to work on weekends. Third will be accurate assignment. In other words, we're going to be using what's called unit information here for our work resources. A unit is a measurement of a resource's available working time, and it's displayed as percentage here. Full-time workers work 100%, and part-time is 50%, and it's based upon an 8-hour day. At least that's what the default project calendar is, and that's what I have mine set up as. So what we're saying here is for Rider 1, he's available 100% of the time, or 8 hours a day. If we go down to 50%, he's only available 4 hours out of a full 8-hour day. And then 75% would be 6 hours, and then, of course, 2 hours would be 25%. And then fourth, accounting. By assigning our resources to our task will not only help us with the first three, as I just mentioned, but it also helps the project account for resource time and costs, from which we'll be able to print reports, accounting reports, of where our time and costs are and how much we have left. Let's go ahead and assign our first work resource. To do that, I want to go to the Gantt chart to see all my tasks so I can assign a resource to one of those tasks. I'm going to go ahead and right-click on the Collapse View bar and go to the Gantt chart. Now when it comes to assigning resources to your task, it's really easy. All you have to do is select your task, come up here on the standard toolbar and click on the button that looks like two dudes. And you can see when I hover over it, it says assign resources and it gives you Alt F10 for the shortcut. Click on it and it opens up and it lists all our resources. In other words, we can't go back to the resource sheet view because we would lose our view here. So it brings it over here in the little pop-up window. Go ahead and scroll down and find your resource, Writer 1, click assign, and that's it. You can see it's got a little check mark next to it. It's got a, that unit working at 100% or 8 hours a day and the costs. We haven't assigned cost to it yet. Like I said, if we did, it would be there. We'll cover that in a later training video. Close out. You'll also see over in the Gantt chart, Writer 1 is assigned to that task. It's also in the entry table, but the entry table is being cut off here by the divider bar. You can, of course, scroll over or click and drag the divider bar out and there we go, resource names. Scroll back. I'm going to click and drag the divider bar back here and then double click really fast so it snaps to the finish column. So you can tell here if you decide to expand the entry table in the Gantt chart view what resource is working on the uh, exam and software task. I prefer the Gantt chart here. Now this is one way to assign resources to your task. There is another way or another view and it'll give me a lot more details than what I see here. And this other view is going to be a combination view. In other words, I'm going to split the window into two panes. The top pane is going to be my Gantt chart. The bottom pane down below is going to be my resource view. To get that combination view, you just need to split your window. And if you're familiar with the Excel training videos, you know what I'm talking about. Just come up here and click on the Windows menu and go down and select Split. Again, the top pane that hasn't changed is my Gantt chart. And then down below, it split it into the resource view. And you'll notice that my exam and software, what I have selected up above, gives me more detail view down below. It gives me the exam and software again. It gives me its start and finish dates, just as you see it here. But it also gives me the resource name, the percentage of units assigned of that resource to the task, which is 100%. He's giving it is all eight hours a day. 
and he's going to be working 40 hours, which makes sense because it's going to take five days to complete this task, which starts August 1st, the previous Friday, and goes through next Thursday, August the 7th. Okay, so I get more details of what I have selected up above. Let's go to task four. Now down below you can see I have no resources assigned to search internal documentation. Well, if I want to go ahead and assign writer one to this task, I can do it one of two ways. I can either come up here and, and again click on the assign resource button and scroll down and select writer one again and click assign. And then close out. You can see that it now pops up down below or now I can hit the undo button if it was a recent edit and undo that or if I want to unassign this go back to the resource button here click on it select writer one and remove and close out and now it's gone you can see that the writer one is no longer assigned to the second task like I said the second way of assigning a, a resource to a task is down in the detail pane here go ahead and select or click in the uh, blank empty cell below resource name click on the drop down arrow you got a list of all your resources I'll select writer 1 and when I'm finished I can go ahead and click OK and automatically it, it defaults to 100 percent units 8 hours a day for 40 hours because the duration of the task from August 8th to August 14th is 5 days 5 working days and of course you can see that writer 1 is up here in the Gantt chart assigned to task 2 next to its bar now if we would just want to stick with our, our detail pane down below our resource view we can go ahead and click next and notice it jumps from task 4 down to task 5 you can see task 5 is listed here and let's do uh, the writer 1 again click on the drop down arrow select writer 1 and go ahead and click OK and you can see over here in the Gantt chart that it's easy to spot our resources here next to each bar let's go to task 7 and also assign writer 1 Duration is two days from August 19th to the 20th. Click OK. And he's working 16 hours uh, at 100%, eight hours a day. OK, let's say that somebody's not going to be working full 100% here. Let's go to the next task, 8, and say that, let me click in the blank area down below, and let's choose our project manager here, and say, instead of working 100%, we can either come over here and click in the units field and go down to 50% and then click OK or click OK and then make the change either way. What we're saying here is when you're working at 50%, you're working at half. In other words, not a full eight hour day. So the project manager is going to be assigned to review with subject matter experts, but only for four hours. He's not going to be totally locked up on this one task. So he has an additional four hours available where he could work on another task on the same day. And you can see that modified the outline. It's also a start to start relationship over here from its predecessor. So we could go down to that one and also choose the project manager to work 50% and click OK. So he's working on two tasks the same day, but it's not going to be eight hours on each task, in which case he'll be over allocated. I mean, who works 16 hours in a day? In any case, it's assuming it's an eight-hour day, so we have four hours. 50% of his time is on this task, and 50% of his time is on the second task. And like I said, they're the same day, August 21st, August 21st. And they finish both the same day as well. Now, again, to unassign resources here, you can either come up and click on the two dudes, the resource button, select it, and click remove, or go ahead and select the resource here, and then delete it, and then click OK, and the resource is removed. As a side note, there are more views to this table down below than meets the eye. The only way to bring up additional views is to right click on the bottom resource view and go down and where well, there it is, the default is resource and predecessors. You can change it to resource work, costs, in any case. That's an extra side note here in case if you, um, your views change. When in doubt, right click on the view and change it back to its default resource and predecessors. One more thing is that I don't recommend that you change views because when you're in the combination view, if you're down here and you say, oh, I want to uh, right click here and go to the track usage, you're going to be in that split view. If that works for you, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I just go ahead and double click really fast on the split bar here and it's gone. Of course, I can go back to Windows to split and then Windows to remove split. But we'll leave this open for the uh, next training, which is on effort driven. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.